Hello once again folks, you're very welcome along to another video from Gundog and Fly. And in this video, um, I'm going to answer a question I've been asked by quite a few of the subscribers. Why haven't I been producing any hunting videos this season? And um, it's very depressing and disappointing really to point out the reasons. There have been such massive changes have taken place here locally. For those of you who don't know, I hunt mainly farmland. And I hunt for mainly pheasants, sometimes woodcock, duck on ponds, etc. It's what's known really as rough shooting. And for a number of years now, principally, well, for quite a long time, but principally since 2017, there have been massive changes taking place on the farms hereabouts. In 2017, the milk quota, anyone in Ireland would be familiar with what the milk quota meant. It meant that the country could only produce X amount of milk. Don't ask me the figures, I don't know. But we were restricted, farmers were basically restricted to the amount of milk that they could actually produce. And in 20, 2017, that was lifted. I don't know the political machinations of all that or why it happened, but essentially what it meant was anybody who had the wherewithal could produce as much milk as they wanted and they would be paid for it. And that how it has remained to date. So in the last seven years, the intensification of ag agriculture here locally has been massive to the point where it's absolutely you could say frightening that the speed is which it's taken place one of the statistics that that will will really sort of put it in perspective is this we've had essentially a doubling of the national herd in that period of time in those few years but here in county tipperary I think the, the, the increase is, uh, is somewhere in that region again, in the county itself. We now have more cows in County Tipperary than in the whole of the country of Scotland. Think about that. It's absolutely frightening. Now, with that increase comes numerous issues and problems. For me as a hunter and my, we'll call it, um, my selfish reasons for for not liking what's happening and then of course the ramifications the further ramifications for wildlife in particular every possible piece of land is now being utilized to produce more milk and wildlife is paying the price for it now here in Ireland, we have lost 70% of all our birds in the last 30 years. The 70% reduction in the numbers of our birds in 30 years. Now that's massive by any standard. And it's a huge tragedy. And when I show you what's happening, which I will do in a while, what's actually happening here at a local level, you will begin to understand why this is happening. Now to go back to the, the cows and the, the land, etc., the ditches, what we call ditches here in Ireland, and I'll, be go I'll go on to explain the importance of ditches later on, but it cannot be overemphasized. Here in Ireland, we have what are known as ditches. You can be called, they're known as by various, in England, for example, they're known as hedgerows. But essentially what they are is the divisions between individual fields or individual farms. And they are basically what Irish wildlife in this area in particular is dependent on for cover and for in the case of birds for nesting and um, just in general most wildlife is dependent on ditches and and what we call cover to perpetuate their species basically to keep going and these ditches are being re removed now at such a rate that 
uh, wildlife is unable to keep up, and in particular the birds. I was speaking to a man recently who is much better versed than I am about this, these things, and he, he explained to me that the loss of the birds, he says, now he says when the, in the springtime when the birds get together and they lay their eggs, the parents actually die of exhaustion trying to find enough insects to feed their young. And of course, needless to say, the young will die also as a consequence. Because of the amount of insecticides, pesticides, herbicides and all the rest of it that are being used on the land, it has decimated the birds population. And of course, when you take anything out of an ecosystem, such as the insects, it's going to have the domino effect and the birds are the obvious ones to me that it has affected. So you ask me why I haven't had any hunting videos this year. This is, I've been out three times hunting and we hunt the remaining ditches basically and we haven't met any pheasants or woodcock or anything as yet. And I have to be honest about it, I'd be very slow to now shoot a pheasant or a woodcock, although the temptation would be great because I've been doing it all my life. But now I know that um, and have seen with my own two eyes, and I, I'm no expert in this area, I'm not a scientist or a botanist or anything like that. All I'm doing is providing you the evidence of my own two eyes, what I can see happening here locally, and it's also happening on a national level. And it's absolutely shocking. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you out for a little detour, if you like, and then I'll come back and talk to you again. This here, folks, is what's known locally in this area of Ireland, where I live, as a ditch. Now, it may be known as something entirely different where you're from. They're called hedgerows in some places, but um, I'm going to call them ditches uh, throughout this little film so that when I say ditches, this is what I'm referring to. And these ditches are wildlife habitat. And they have a huge variety of different species of bushes, trees, all manner of fauna and flora live in these ditches. And most of them are many hundreds of years, if not thousands of years old. And they're part of our natural heritage, along with being a haven for wildlife. They're being removed out of the countryside at an exponential rate. Hundreds of miles of them are being removed every year in the name of progress. And it's a tragedy for wildlife. Um, these are the sort of places where I would hunt and have been doing all my life. And they're being removed so quickly, it's absolutely shocking that it's allowed to happen and allowed to continue. Um, they are afforded some protection under the law, but there are what I would call loopholes, meaning that if you want to remove a ditch, well then it can be done. And that's a tragedy too for the wildlife. So what I'm going to do in this film is I'm going to show you and outline to you what's happening here at a local level vis-a-vis -vis these ditches. and. Uh, then I'm going to talk about it in more broad terms and its impact on the local wildlife here and then nationally, if you like. And um, I hope you're going to stay with me for that. Um, I'm not an expert on in this field. All I'm going to tell you is what I have seen happening here with my own two eyes. I'm not a botanist or anything like that. I'm not fully au fait with um, the science end of it. But what I do know is, is that it's had a huge impact on wildlife here locally and to me personally obviously but to leave my selfish needs aside it's to look at it in the round and see what effect it's happening um, on a national level as well as a local level here so next i'm going to show you uh, an example of um, what's happening here locally
This piece of land here would be fairly, a fairly typical example of what's happening here locally. This piece of land you're looking at here, um, and there's a lot of it here behind me as well, there's 150 acres or thereabouts. And that 150 acres was comprised of five fields. There's now just one field. The five fields were turned into one in the space of three weeks. Big machinery, track machines were brought in here and they took out all the internal ditches. Now, as you can imagine, there was serious disruption to the local ecology in terms of its wildlife, etc. There were also two ponds here, which when I used to come in here hunting, those ponds would hold a duck from time to time, and no doubt they were um, the habitat of, say, water hens, and um, there would have been possibly uh, amphibians like newts and frogs, etc. And needless to say, there would have been insects and a whole host of other wildlife around those ponds. Those ponds were drained and filled in. And now what we have effectively is a green desert all the way from here to those trees in the background. We now have 150 acres of virtually no wildlife habitat at all. And this is just a sample of what's happening here locally and it's also happening on a national level to various extents in different places. Um, I am going to show you next what's happening in places where there are ditches remaining and what's actually actually happening to those ditches. Now this too was once, I'm not certain of the number, but there were at least three if not more fields and this is now one field and as you can see I'm not very good at guessing acreage but oh, there's probably 60 acres at least in this field now folks this is the sort of ditch I'm talking about it's pretty typical of what happens to any of the remaining ditches any of the ditches that are not taken out as you can see, it's approximately four foot high. It's shorn on both sides and any wildness is gone out of it. The height, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is going to affect any owls in particular flying over. This is a road ditch, as you can see. So this is happening um, all across the fields here too. All the ditches are cut and shorn down to that height. For what purpose, I don't know. It makes absolutely no sense as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so that was it folks, that was a little uh, little tour around here locally. Um, I think you'll probably agree with me that it's not pleasant to have to basically, in my case, from my old selfish point of view, basically hunting is a thing of the past in in a lot of ways i've kept many gun dogs over the years some of you who know me will know that i have had setters pointers springer spaniels cocker spaniels i've had them all and i've worked them all down through the years and now i just have one springer spaniel those of you who are regular viewers to the channel will remember i had a, an english setter lady who was probably one of the best gun dogs I've ever seen in all my life. And she was wasted around here locally. There, there was no game for her. So I, I reluctantly sold her and now she's gone to a part of the country where there is still a little bit of cover and a few ditches remaining and I hope she does well for her new owner. I also had a young red setter coming on. And again, she's gone because she'd be wasted here the dog would be basically hunting for nothing that's unfortunately the way it is and she would she just wouldn't get the value or neither would i out of the hunting experience hereabouts it was brilliant for many many years and i experienced a lot of good hunts and a lot of good days out with great friends and great dogs but um regrettably it has declined now to the point where to try and find somewhere to go 
I would have to travel quite a long ways and I have many invitations to places around the country where I could still go, but there's nothing like your own home ground. And I know it like the back of my hand, I'm hunting all my life there. And it's sad to see the way that has gone. What are the solutions? I don't know. I can't see a reversal in the, um, the way it's gone with the intensification of the agriculture and the way that the land has been utilised. I can't see anything changing there in the short term at any rate. It's all now about money. That's the bottom line. And uh, sad to see it gone that way. So anyway, folks, that's the video. Um, <laughs> I hope you, I normally say I hope you enjoyed watching the video. You probably didn't in this case, but that's the way it is. And that's the way, um, that's the way the cookie crumbles, as they say. So anyway, I hope the next video um, will be a bit more upbeat. I may do some little bit of hunting and maybe produce some kind of video at some point. And uh, if I do, I'll be sure to post it and let you know. So in the meantime, thanks for watching again. And if you'd like to support the channel, um, <coughs> I have a little link in the description to my Patreon page. It would be much appreciated. So that's it, folks. Goramila Mahagui, as Vorkhorlu Dorish, Dagas, Gadi and Kea Dorele, Slang of Oil.